Let's say you have some JavaScript code that lives in a single file. You can turn this code into a module by exporting it. This allows other files to use an import statement to import this file as a dependency. So a module is nothing more than a file that exports its own code. This allows developers to organize code within their own projects or share code with the world through package managers like NPM. In modern front-end development, it's most common to use ES modules, which became an official language feature in 2015. This syntax is also supported in Node 13, but traditionally the way to do this in Node is with require.js. It's a similar idea, but instead we use this require function to import a module. Require is more common now, but the future is ES modules. A module can export its code in a variety of ways, and this will affect the way the consumer imports it. A module can export a single default value, multiple values, or both. If a module provides a default export, it means the consumer can call import name from path. The importing file can choose whatever name it wants, but a module also has the option to expose multiple exports from a single file. You can export them one by one or all together as a single export list. On the other side, the importer will use the exact name used in the module. However, it is possible to rename an import using the as keyword. A huge benefit of named exports is that they make the module tree shakeable. That means the consumer only imports the code they actually need, resulting in smaller bundle sizes and better performance. You can also combine the best of both worlds to give you a hybrid syntax that looks like this. It helps to have a cheat sheet. My personal favorite is the one from Samantha Ming. If you don't already follow her awesome post on Twitter, you definitely should be. This has been ES Modules in 100 seconds. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.